probability of compound events. A compound event means more than one event is happening. Each event produces its own set of outcomes. Let's look at rolling two dice. Before we looked at rolling only one die, and therefore the probability was one through six. But when you roll two dice, you actually start creating combinations because each dice produces its own one through six number. When you roll two dice, you have 36 possible outcomes. Now you can see the outcomes if you would sit down and list them all out yourself. I have actually created a table here with all 36 different outcomes for you to review. If you look closely, you will see the outcomes as they're rolled, as possible rolls, but you might see some that look repeated, like two and three and three and two. They sound similar, but they're different because one dice would roll a two, the other a three, and then that idea or different outcomes flip-flops. So they're counted as two separate outcomes. We've listed everything from rolling what's called snake eyes, one and a one, all the way up to the highest number, six and a six, 12. That double roll in Monopoly is always a winner. But let's talk about what the probability is that you could roll a three. When we rolled a single dice, we know that there was only one chance to get a three. But here, you see we actually have two chances to get an outcome of three. Those two chances over the 36 total outcomes in simplest form gives us a one in 18 chance. The six times six is actually found because there are six rows and six columns, or dice one has six chances, dice two has six numbers, and if you multiply those together, you get 36, or the total number of outcomes. It's a little bit easier than listing everything out. Now what's the probability that you'll not roll a 10? Do you see this little squiggly line in front of 10? That means not. So I'm gonna go up here and just cancel out all the 10s. There are three of them. I know there's 36 chances, so 36 minus three gives me 33. I have 33 out of 36 total chances, which gives me, in simplest form, an 11 out of 12 chance of rolling anything but a 10. Next, we're gonna flip a coin and roll the dice. Just one this time. When you flip a coin and roll the dice, you have 12 possibilities. How does that happen? Well, two is heads or tails, six is numbers one, two, three, four, five, six. So two times six gives us 12. But you can look closer at the actual combinations. Heads with a one, heads with a tail, or two, heads with a three, heads with a four, so on and so, on and so forth. So the probability of getting heads, well, I have six chances. The total is 12. We're gonna simplify that and get one over two or a 50-50 chance. So I have a 50-50 chance of getting heads or a 50-50 chance of getting tails. Now let's look at how many times could you expect to flip tails and an even number if you flip the coin 60 times. Well, let's go up here and find the combinations that have tails, that's only the bottom row, and even numbers, which are numbers two, four, and six. There are three. Again, total number of outcomes are 12. That in simplest form gives us one out of four chance. And we're gonna go ahead and solve for this proportion to figure out what would happen if we did it 60 times. Well, four times 15 gives me 60, and one times 15 gives me 15. So that means I should get tails and an even number 15 times if I do this 60 different times, 15 out of 60. Next, we have a bag of marbles. Now, there's only one bag, but we're actually going to do two different events. We're gonna reach in the bag, we're gonna pull out a marble, and then we're gonna put that marble back, we're gonna replace it, and we're gonna reach in and pull out another marble. So it says, what's the probability of getting blue and blue? Well, first I need to figure out what is the probability of getting blue? Six blue out of eight total. So you see here the chance of selecting blue is six out of eight, but in simplest form, three out of four. Now let's figure out what the chance of selecting red is. I'm gonna go over and count the red ones. One, two, 
count up the rest of the marbles. And there are eight total marbles in the bag, including the two red. So therefore, the chance of selecting red is two out of eight. In simplest form, this is one out of four. So I figured out what the outcome was for each one of those. Now I need to know what the probability that I'm gonna select two blue, probability of blue and blue. Well, we already decided that selecting a blue would be three out of four. So if I put it back and try it again, it would be three out of four. But this time we multiply and we get nine out of 16. We do the same thing when we get red. We said there was a one in four chance. So the first time I have a one in four chance. The second time I have a one in four chance. If I multiply those chances together, I get one out of 16. Lastly, blue, put it back, then red is three fourths times one fourth, which gives me a three out of 16 chance. So you can see most likely to get blue and blue. Then I have a decent chance of getting blue and red, not a very good chance of getting red and red again. Remember that you do replace it so it goes back to the same outcome. So today's takeaway, compound events, remember to multiply the outcomes, 